Supreme Court justice commits suicide. And there's this connection between him and one of his best friends who was arrested for sex trafficking, drugs and other things. Let's put up a picture of the state Supreme Court Justice John L. Mikalski. He died by suicide at his Amherst home Tuesday. Several sources confirmed 12 days after police executed a search warrant at his home. There's a lot of background to this story, a lot of twists and turns. The defense attorney Terrence M. Connors told the Buffalo News he received a call about the death late Tuesday morning and has been with the family at the Mikalski home. It's heartbreaking, the attorney said. He was such a good guy, this just didn't have to happen. Connor said he was sick when he got the news, especially since he was with the judge last week and the justice's legal troubles seemed manageable. Now I want you to understand the wording here, okay? The attorney said the legal troubles of the state's uh, Supreme Court justice seemed manageable. I'm going to show you what legal troubles the attorney was talking about. We're not talking about some judicial review or an appellate court issue. We are talking about a massive criminal investigation that spanned for years into this justice. There's more. Federal and state law enforcement officers who have been investigating the judge for several years raided his home on March 24th, but no charges were filed against the judge or his wife at that time. The judge has been under public scrutiny since he suffered a serious leg injury back in 2021 when he was struck by a slow moving freight train. In what another judge said was actually a suicide attempt. The Buffalo News reported that the train incident occurred days after federal agents contacted the judge to question him about his friendship with Cheek Tawaga strip club owner Peter Garris Jr., a former client of the judge. So the judge, let's go back to this train thing, okay? Um, the judge was actually struck by the train on the same day. Garris, his friend, was arrested on felonies, including drug trafficking, sex trafficking, bribing a federal drug agent, charges his friend has denied, okay? So what the narrative suggests is that in 2021, on the day that his friend was arrested for these charges, he attempted to kill himself. He was not successful based on the narrative, the friendship between the judge and Garris began decades ago when Mikalski was in private practice and performed legal work for his friend strip club, according to attorney Anthony J. Lana, who was also representing the judge. This judge has many attorneys, just so you know, has multiple lawyers. So the judge, Mikalski, has also been under investigation. By the State Commission on Judicial Conduct, which reviews complaints of ethical misconduct by judges. It is investigating whether Garris, his friend, paid uh, paid uh, the judge $5,000 in cash for performing at his wedding in 2014. That's actually prohibited by state law. That's another legal issue. The letter that this judge wrote on behalf of his friend was effective. The judge that received this letter, uh, the federal judge, decided to be lenient on his friend. Uh, here's what I want to say. There were multiple investigations, multiple criminal investigations, and this judge had multiple attorneys defending him during these investigations. He was still allowed to be on the Supreme Court bench for the state of New York. Now, I get it. A person is innocent until proven guilty. That is a legal standard in a court of law. Just because you are a judge does not mean you get to keep your job while under federal investigation. That's not what it means. Judges can be removed for various reasons, including pending litigation and pending investigations. They decided not to remove the judge, even though the judge was under investigation for years. It is sad that the judge has now committed suicide. That is sad and I do not advocate 
for anybody to take themselves out like that. Typically, there's light at the end of the tunnel somewhere, all right? If anyone you know, if you or anyone you know is struggling with those thoughts, there's a lifeline, provides 24 7 help, confidential support. 1 800 273 8255. Doctor, I looked at this story, I researched the story, I saw all of these variables. And I said, you know, if if someone would have come in early with an intervention, maybe this is a different outcome. You know, people do wrong things, doc. People make mistakes and sometimes people people just do corrupt things, okay? That doesn't mean there's no light somewhere at the end of the tunnel for them. But when you continue to get a pass, when you're not held accountable for your actions, when there's virtually zero accountability for whatever wrongdoing you are engaged in, it gives your life a sense of privilege rather than a sense of purpose. And that's empty, Doc, would you not agree? I would agree. I mean, obviously there's a lot more that's gonna come out about this story and we really don't know the details. When I first saw it, I immediately thought of the psychiatric term, it's called narcissistic injury. Not that the person Mm. is a narcissist, but the idea is basically that someone has a high esteemed position and then something comes out about them that causes shame. And and if you're somebody who is powerful or or potentially you know in the narcissistic category, like judges or politicians often are, the fall from grace is really powerful. And so the perceived shame, they basically fall a lot harder and a lot farther than than other people. And so I, I think probably there's gonna be something that's gonna come out about these cases. And so certainly I think there's more to come out about this that we don't know. I would also note that we've done now three stories in a row about judges on the show. Um, and, and I think it's important to note that you know this is a time where judges are really in the focus, right? We're learning on one hand that judges are human, they're fallible. We're also learning that judges have an unbelievable amount of power over people people's lives over the future of the country and the American system. The judiciary really has a lot of power. And the third, of course, is that if you want to appoint judges who are going to uphold our way of life as we've known it, you have to win elections in a certain kind of way. And so we're having all these debates about judges because judges, these are compelling stories, but also judges are very important right now. That's right, they they are important to the policy fabric of our country and local communities, obviously. 